On July 1, 1945, Angela Trimble was born in Miami, Florida. If that name doesn't sound familiar, it's probably because you know her as Debbie Harry, the co-founder and lead singer of the iconic new wave and punk rock band Blondie. While Harry shared a lot of herself in, here are a few facts you might not know about the blonde bombshell. For example, how she managed to get out of Ted Van Escar, who actually her hits were written for and were Marilyn Monroe her real mother. Debbie Harry is a natural redhead. In a 2017 Debbie Harry revealed that her natural color pulls red. My own hair was strawberry blonde with a lot of red in it, she wrote. In the summer my highlights would really come out. I hung out with older girls at the municipal pool in Hawthorne, New Jersey, where I grew up. There was one girl in particular whose blonde hair I really liked. Her mother was a beautician, so I asked her about accelerating the highlight process. The girl told her to mix two-thirds peroxide with one-third ammonia and comb it through her hair, basically a homemade sun-in. It worked, Harry said. As an adult, she'd go increasingly platinum, favoring at-home box dyes and becoming ever more adept at achieving ultra-pale shades. Even to this day, Harry mostly continues to bleach her hair at home. I've always liked doing my color at home myself because I can walk around and do things, she said. I used to take a bath while I had the bleach on my head, and at the end, I'd just submerge. It may not have been the best method, but it was expedient. I get very antsy in a salon chair. Friends, my goal is to get 1,500 subscribers by the end of the month. You can help me by simply clicking on the subscribe button. It's not hard for you to do, but very pleasant for me. As a child, Debbie Harry used to daydream that her real mother was Marilyn Monroe. Deborah and Harry was adopted at three months old by New Jersey gift shop owners Richard and Catherine Harry. She learned that she was adopted at age four and said it gave her a sense of freedom. They explained it to me in a really nice way. It made me feel quite special somehow. I sometimes attribute my, uh, adventurous nature to that. I have an open mind about things. It didn't present me with any borders. Debbie Harry once worked as a Playboy bunny. At one point in the early 1970s, Harry worked at New York City's Playboy Club, and her hair was long and reddish brown. I guess I wanted to rise to the challenge, she said, when asked why she became a Playboy Bunny. I don't know, I think it was something left over from a friend of my parents, who was a member of the Playboy Club, and he always made it seem so exotic and so exciting, she explained. And I also thought it would be a good way to make money, which it was. So I tried it but I think I worked there for eight or nine months. She also claimed that despite how controversial the job might seem in hindsight, her experience with Playboy wasn't negative. We became like performers, you know, she added. We were important to them. We were important to the business, so they took very good care of us. She likes a good bottle of Chardonnay. In fact, it's the one thing Harry has to have backstage when she's touring. In 2017, Harry told Bon Appetit that she usually prefers cake bread sellers. However, there's a nameless one that still sticks in her mind. Once I was at a festival in Europe, I can't remember where, and the promoter was really into wine, she said. He brought out a bottle of Chardonnay that I probably would have slept with if it had been a person. So delicious. For decades, Harry believed she might have had a near disastrous brush with serial killer Ted Bundy. In 1972, back when hitchhiking didn't have the bad rap it does today, Harry climbed into a stranger's car on Avenue C in New York's East Village after she couldn't find a taxi. The driver was a good-looking, well-dressed young man with dark curly hair. Harry's original account of the event was detailed in an unnamed newspaper in 1989. I got in the car, and it was summertime and the windows were all rolled up except about an inch and a half at the top, Harry said. So I was sitting there, and he wasn't really talking to me. Automatically, I sort of reached to roll down the window, and I realized there was no door handle, no window crank, no nothing. The inside of the car was totally stripped out. To escape, Harry squeezed her arm out the window and opened the door from the outside. As soon as he saw that, he tried to turn the corner really fast, and I spun out of the car and landed in the middle of the street, Harry said. When she read about Ted Bundy's death years later, she thought back to that incident, 
the whole description of how he operated and what he looked like and the kind of car he drove and the time frame he was doing that in that area of the country fit exactly, she said. I said, my God, it was him. Her suspicion has since been debunked, since Bundy wasn't known to have been in New York City and wasn't known to abduct any women until at least 1974. Harry herself admits that the car didn't match Bundy's Volkswagen. She told RuPaul on an episode of his podcast, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't Bundy's Volkswagen. It didn't have the same dashboard. It was squarer. Still, scary. Call Me was originally earmarked for Stevie Nicks. Written by songwriter Giorgio Moroder, Call Me spent six weeks at number one, becoming the biggest selling song of 1980. But the song almost never came Harry's way. Moroder had originally tried to give the song to Stevie Nicks. She reportedly loved the demo, but couldn't use it due to interlabel politics. She had just signed with a new label, which somehow would have made working with Marauder difficult. That is all for today. Hope you were surprised by these unexpected sides of Debbie Harry's life. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.